Trollord Games. Join the fray. Alright, here we are with GM Strix to trade number something or the other. 87. Look, it's all caught up. It caught it up. It being put on that way. That's the title, and we're constantly forgetting to update it. <laughs> it's Trix of the Trade. Yeah, but it's number 87, so last uh, week was number. Whatever. Yeah, probably. No other trouble. Wait, you've got 87 of these? Hmm. Well, I've got 80, not 87. I don't think 87 twitches. Or whatever it's called. I've got 87 newsletters, and we've done probably 60 twitches. Dude, that's badass. What's that? That's an eldritch goblin. That's, uh, I can't remember his name, but uh, he plucked his eye out. That's his wife's skull, and he carries it everywhere he goes. Um, I can't remember what the eye is, and those are ghosts. Everyone he kills is attached to him with a chain, an ethereal chain, so he's got all these ghosts that go with him. So if you fight that eldritch goblin, you end up fighting all the ghosts. Yeah, a huge number of guns. Oh, that's yeah. pretty. Who drew the picture? Uh, Zoe. Wow, that's yeah. right. Can they see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so. This is what they see. So here, let me get this out of the way. That's our little panel, and this is what they're seeing. But this, the reason I put this. <laughs> Hello, everybody. The reason I put. Uh, <laughs> is it sixty? I don't know. The reason I put this over here is because this is going to be behind by like a minute. So I covered oh, 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 so I covered that I up. So I couldn't figure out when I was looking down. Yeah, so it's real time, and then this is where this is the chat room where everybody's jib jab jabbering. Look, as I'm getting older, my shoulders are slinking down into my back. We're all just <laughs> we're old coots. That's how I describe ourselves: old coots. Old coots on death's door. Death's How's door. it going, real long shot chicory <laughs> coffee? I don't know if it's sixty or not. I have no idea. I just assumed it was because uh, the first it's twenty aren't two. attached. It's at least two because yeah. I didn't want to use them. Uh, who knows? But obviously Davis is here today. And how's it going, Melkor? Uh, we got those changes in the player's handbook that you had mentioned. I just released that today. Um, Melkor found a problem literally, in, and he's been talking about this. I think, wasn't it you, Melkor? He's been talking about this for years, trying to get us to change it. But if you read if from the first through the seventh print, if you read on the page, what, four or five, the... It tells you that you have to make attribute checks for non-attribute, or for whatever. It just, it's messed up. It, it tells you to make an attribute check, but you're not supposed to. In the first four pages? Yeah. I'd have to. You know where, you know what page it is? <laughs> <laughs> Melkor mentioned it to us for three printings, and in typical troll fashion. And we politely say, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, they're never there. They're never there. They're idiots. Um... It was I really just, funny. I just wrote it. I never read it. Well, I asked, I asked Mac about it because I, you know, I didn't want to chop up anything in case I was misreading it. And Mac was like, "Why is that in there?" And he goes, "You know what that is? That's Davis and I's first original notes that somehow survived oh, all it's of an these artifact. printing. It was an artifact. Now I can't find what that's an it artifact. That's cool. Yeah, see, every check has an associated attribute. Whenever one of these checks is made, a d20 is rolled by the player." Attribute and level modifiers for class abilities only are added to this. For class abilities only are added to this role. So, according to this rule, if you make um, if you make a check that's not a class ability, like swimming river, you don't add your level to it. Yeah, that was in the original rules. That yeah, that's what Mag was saying. He, he said that. Yeah, it's kind of funny. But it is cleaned out now. Which I will be honest, still still exists in my game. <laughs> <laughs> Your game's a little bit, a little bit tougher than most. Yeah. Uh, let's see if we missed something up here. Blah, 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 blah. We kind of, blah, blah. All right. How's it going? Anime bugs. I suppose that. Oh, hello, Dad. That's one of your children. <laughs> that's great. Who's that? Oh, I guess that's uh, uh, Henry. 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 Yeah, it was just for the first introduction check, so I thought it was important. Yeah, it's a little important there, Melancor. Anime bags. Uh, yeah, I got. Yeah, it's okay. and it's cleaned out now in theory. I know all kinds of things sneak past. How's it going, Lord Dalius? What's up, Dave? That's your son. <laughs> 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 Will the CNC and Zaya primer require a coupon code? The link goes to page with six ninety nine cost. Uh, you know, I don't know what's up with that, Dardian. We haven't actually worked on uh, in Zaya in what a year or yeah. something like that. So I'm not sure what's going on with Inzaya. Um, no, no, well, what about the the primer? The link goes to six hundred. I don't know. I mean, is the primer supposed to be free? I can't remember. I thought it was. Oh, then we need to fix that. Probably a digital. Yes, it's free. Okay, so uh, there okay. you go. Tim will fix that. 
it'll be clearer than the last thing I asked him to fix, which uh, was, oh, wait a minute, maybe there's a, this is Chuck, damn it, oh, well, whatever, someone will fix it. <laughs> and it may be what we're giving away today, I don't know, let me check this out. Oh, notes. okay, I don't really know. I thought it was going to be <laughs> free with purchase of those, because I've only done like three modu four modules, uh, the big four modules. Four big modules. Yeah, yeah, it was supposed to be free with the And three big. small ones. Okay, so we're giving away the Insane Primate. That's what they're talking about. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, so it's not at, for free. But now yeah, it is. And now for the show. For those at the show, it is. And thank you, Geek Preacher, for the subscription. Very much appreciated. Uh, someone will fix it. That's the troll way. It might take us eight printings, but, <laughs> but we'll, we will get to it at some point. <laughs> and thank you, uh, Malcor, for being uh, patient. And dog it constantly yes. because it, it takes a while to drill things into my head. But you have discovered an artifact. You're like that a literary cool. archaeologist. You discovered that's an right. artifact. Of the, cool. uh, that's really cool, yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many other artifacts are in there. Thanks to the pre free PDF when we get it. Oh, there it goes. Every day at four. I start yawning. I think my body's like, okay, when I start screaming, my body's like, oh, okay, day's over. You even bore yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I pour myself into a coma. It's <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. After today's strings were giving away a digital cup. Oh, is that Chuck? Uh, Chuck or Tim, I don't know. They got a lot of that. Lamp, so. you it. Yeah, there it is. Uh, code will be at the end of the show. I have been informed, so you should be good. Uh, how's it going, King Kothar? Uh, yeah, a lot of that's automated. They just type in more oh, okay. things. And I don't know. It won't be fixed. It'll have an asterisk and a footnote saying this has been here since the first printing, so we acknowledge it is wrong, but we're not changing that. It won't be historical inaccuracy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was telling Bifford, I was telling guys on Discord, Bifford was one of them. I that found, would be awesome, though. <laughs> well, I found a, a word in, when, uh, in the section on discussing divine, uh, whatever the hell, spells, whatever. Stuff. Whatever it is, and uh, we spelled divine once D E F I N E. Well, Wilson has a first printing in there, and I went in there and checked it, and it's been misspelled in every edition of C and C, the art not edition, but printing that we put out. And I posted and said, I'm gonna fix this, but I feel like I shouldn't. I feel like I should just leave it. I think you should just leave it. <laughs> and some would just leave it. It becomes one of those that's sort of a cool thing. Uh, I, I guess. I mean, mm -hmm. it would be cool to me, but. Oh, it would be cool, but new players might, uh, yeah. Eight printings. We we figure about a forty percent accuracy in the book. That's what we're <laughs> going for. That's no. Say hey to Davis from your studio. He's right here. That's Derek from. Uh, hey Jim man, Jim how's Creek. it going? Yeah, absolutely. I can't see your picture up anymore. Yeah, now he's all over TikTok. Are you yeah, no, I just yeah. watched one of his yeah, TikTok. Yeah. Uh, tough room. <laughs> what did we miss? Something obsidian. <laughs> Where I watched the TikTok where you were playing Castles of Castles of Crusades. Whatever you made a huge backstory for a knight, I believe it was, and he got trampled to death by a mammoth, by some guy who used a rod of wonder or something like that in a dungeon, and your knight got trampled. I just gave away a so rod. You made, and what, he made a replacement character. I can't remember what he did with a replacement character now. But it was a real simple replacement character. Oh, no name! In nominate. You named him in nominate. Yeah. No <laughs> name or something like that. <laughs> Typical troll. I have a question regarding the warden. You replied to email on Kickstarter indicating it will be available in, in TL Store after shipment to Kickstarter supporters. Where is the best place to sign up to be notified as soon as possible when that happens? Discord mailing list. So we'll release that. We were going to release that this Tuesday, uh, but the Sarah Frazetta stuff kind of sidelined that, and we knocked it to next week. So, and we're super, super excited. For those of you who don't know, the granddaughter of Frank Frazetta has signed on to join the Robert E. Howard Kickstarter that we're art chronology that we're launching in two weeks. Yeah, about two weeks. So super pumped about that. But that knocked that knocked the warden to next week. But Tim and I fixed the date of Tuesday to begin to launch that sucker and make it free. Uh, let's see. So give us about one more week. Squeamish newer players and teachers and engineers hate typos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost been playing it since the first printing. First hand <laughs> with all of those yeah. typos. I've been playing with all these typos. I deserve something from the troll or so kind of fit. At least one correctly spelled word. Yeah, now I will say if you guys have found something in the player's handbook, 
Keep it to yourself. <laughs> Post it to me now. My guess is, I mean, it's almost done. I've got... Yeah, we were going over the lab today, so there's not nice. much left to do. And if you find something... Let us know. Send it to him, not to me, because I ain't going to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got two pictures to go and a couple of... i got to adjust the fighter. I don't like how it's adjusted. And then do a couple of comb-overs. But, um, yeah, she's done. So if you find something, please let us know before we go to print, not after we go to print. Uh, is there going to be a leather option, please? Not, uh, well, yes. So, Darty, and there's going to be about five leathers available. I'll set one aside for you. Uh, we got to make sure everything is shipped. But, um, yeah, there, there were not many. I didn't over that do much overage on the warden. I really don't know why I didn't do much overage on the warden. Oh, there's no, wait, there's that leather stuff. Oh, yeah. Warden? It's huge. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's just absolutely insane. It's Have you stopped showing them the picture of it and everything? I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of them already got it. Oh, okay. Uh, it's been. They should. Most of everybody should have it by now, unless they're overseas. When are we going to see you run a live stream, Davis? Would love to see you drown your brother's character in a river crossing. <laughs> 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 yeah, Davis. Uh, Davis has killed many, 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 many of my characters. Oh, what years. would be the most dumb death? Uh, you know, you know, one of the photos. No, no, no. Chris's character died in mud. He drowned in oh, mud. He did drown in he mud. He literally yeah. drowned in a puddle of mud. <laughs> he kept making, he kept failing his checks until he drowned. I think it was mine. I thought mine was uh, charging the boars. Oh, mercy. You've had it numerous deaths. I've so had many. so many deaths. My favorite is the the warriors. I actually, did a TikTok on that one the other day. In my first. So we're playing. It's like 1977. We're, oh yeah, 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 Tarzan. Yeah, it was yeah. Barely, I don't know if that one was Tarzan, but I made this warrior from a village. He goes yeah. down on a road. He gets killed by some spiders. I made another warrior from the village, killed by the spiders. About the third warrior that died, I started getting mad, and I just wanted to kill the spiders. So I kept making warriors, and after 17 of my characters died, <laughs> you just said, "All right, you wiped the village out. There's just no one left." The, uh, I think you named them all Tarzan. I can't remember Tarzan. One, Probably. Tarzan. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of ape names in my early days. Interesting, assuming the first ed was 40% correct and then 40% of the issues were fixed in each subsequent issue by the time you get to the eighth printing, which is 98.3%. That's probably accurate. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pete, that's too much. That is probably, sadly, much too accurate for. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? I keep finding stuff and then forgetting, but to be honest, there are probably 50 plus typos in the PHP. Well, send them our way when you find them. I'll PM you my details if you could do that. Uh, yeah, I will attempt to. There's the, Mr. Muddles has joined us. So Max probably driving home, listening, oh, okay. listening to it from the road. So he, he can't say much because he's driving. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sure he can. <laughs> <laughs> Just pull over, Mac. Yeah, there you go. I've been using my copy as a doorstop. It was kind of pricey, but it does the job. That thing is monstrously huge. A river crossing or thrown off a bridge or kicked off a cliff or dropped into a volcano. So now Davis, Lord Davis, Davis has one of my favorite character deaths. So it was Mac, or I think Mac was running, it may have been Chris. We were fighting some ogres on a bridge, and there's Mac. This, was it Mac, and there's this chasm, and Davis was playing a rogue, and he, he decided to do this heroic thing of running down the bridge rail and leaping okay. off the bridge. Okay, wait, there's a preamble for that, though, because I was late to the game. Oh, okay. Y'all had already started, so the ogre battle was underway. Yeah. And it was the very first minute that I was playing that this happened. Now go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, so he runs in and he's going to try to. He's, well, the bridge goes over this thousand foot cab, chasm or whatever, and Davis is going to try to jump behind the ogres. He leaps, rolls a one, first thing out of the gate, falls to his death. Instantaneous death. It was just wonderful. That was, yeah, that was pretty It was cool. hilarious. Type of toxic part. They keep running out of the village gates, climbing over the dead tar sands to get to the spiders. <laughs> yeah. I think Davis finally got irritated with that. So. I needed a new setting. Yeah. So I started running the same spiders. <laughs> Something new. Hey, Steve, will there be a reprint of the Adventures Backpack? I've sent in some edits additions to that previously, which also showed up in the Players, hand, players Archive. Yeah, absolutely. Send those to me again. I'm going to hit the Players Archive in the next week or so and wrap that sucker up as soon as the PHB is done. Uh, I'm going to be out of pocket for a couple of days next week, but other than that, I'll be hammered away. So definitely send that. Just do it to the troll email email like you have been, Melkor. That'd be very, 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 very helpful. And put a huge title in it so I'm making sure I to see it. How's it going, Retro Gamer? Eat to serve. Hey, man, how's it going? It's a day AMA of tricks and two chanel. Yeah, it's, well, it's tricks of the trade, but we'll see how that pans out. That's <laughs> <laughs> with, with two of us in the room, <laughs> it's, it's, it's unlikely to achieve anything of great success. Yeah. Is so what actually, uh, so we're, we're good in, we're 15 minutes in, let's dive into this Tricks of the Trade. So, um, t 
two things led to today's subject matter. So, uh, the first off, someone on TikTok asked this. Wait, really cool. did you write all those notes? Yeah. For this? Yeah. Well, that that's the, we, this goes out in a newsletter. Oh, every okay. Thursday. Okay, all right, all right. Oh yeah, that's not for this. No, it's not. Okay, I was gonna say that's a lot of work for a twit. I guess you have to. <laughs> uh, I mean, you have an idea what you're sort doing. Sort of. So anyway, so this girl on TikTok asks. She's a, a young DM, and she's I guess in fifth edition they have something where you roll or, or somewhere. I don't know. She's playing five E, but you roll initiative even outside of combat, or you can to give everyone a chance to do something at the table. So she had a really cool question about how you handle... That's not a bad idea. No, it, it's it's cool, but she, but she had this question about how to handle it, and yeah. I answered that on... So what I was doing this morning, and I answered that, and I thought I'd never do initiative outside, because I actually oh, like gosh. chaos at the table. Oh, oh, yeah, and yeah. I, I'm a big fan of a little bit of organized chaos at the table, and then to add to it, so when I was thinking, I thought this morning, well, that's that's what this week's GM Tricks with Trades will be about. And since Davis was in the other room working, I thought, well, that just is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> just add chaos. Add chaos, chaos to the Twitch screen. <laughs> chaos is literally here. Let's roll with it. So, <laughs> match five e with the down thumbs. Play, play CLC. So, so anyways, so essentially, the, what I like. I if you're me. not playing CNC, you're not playing the game. The game. Uh, so the first thing, uh, chaos keeps things from being a business. That's exactly right. Eat to surf. I think eat to surf and I came a lot of life. Uh, that's exactly right. Because if you do, if you sit in there and you're just calling on people and doing this rote descriptions and people are just kind of responding and that type of stuff, it's like being in a classroom and no one wants oh, to be yeah, in a classroom. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're just kind of sitting there waiting for you to say something and then they wait for their turn or they raise their hand or whatever. And I like that once you engage and you kind of have and this is the first trick was to embrace it and for a lot of people like myself who like you like chaos yeah no I mean, as you don't generally, generally. Yes, it doesn't generally, bother you yes, no. it doesn't bother you no it doesn't bother me no it yeah. definitely doesn't bother me yeah, th things like that kind of get to me that's why, that's why I throw so many things away <laughs> <laughs> if I see it it doesn't have a place I throw it yes. in the trash um, as everyone in my family knows sadly <laughs> yeah. hey do you know where the no <laughs> it's not with us anymore. Could be here, could be there. Yeah, it's probably enough. But uh, but at the table when you have players talking and players talking to each other and you're trying to talk to someone or uh, get something out of another player, all of that noise and all of that uh, distraction at the table, it's actually a good thing. It's sort of like the quintessential Hollywood depiction of the table where everybody's eating and talking and scooping food into their plates and having a good time. And that's really, I think, that if you'll embrace the chaos and kind of shift yourself into looking at it that way, uh, I, I think that that's the first step towards towards letting go and not making it into a schoolroom. Yeah. All right, so what do we got here? Yeah, uh, you can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just... I've used initiative outside of combat to allow quarter, quieter players a chance to interact with NPCs. I'm also playing online, so too much chaos doesn't work as well. The chaos online is, I have not figured out how to master that. You're right there. Uh, and I, one of the things, and I talked about this somewhere in the, the Tricks of the Trade, what I do, I don't do the initiative outside of combat, but what I do is I have a very set routine where I ask every, I, I, I ask every game session is the same. People on the right get asked first, and I move around the table in that direction, engaging people. And that actually, I guess that's the last trick of the trade, and that allows me to shake things up. That's later. actually a really interesting question, though, because I hadn't considered that before. The chaos on screen, and I haven't, I've only played on, like, one time, right? Yeah. And everyone took their turn talking. But I did notice that there's a different dynamic because you can't read body language no. uh, as well. Well, the least. mics are cutting out. Mics are cutting in and out. So the chaos doesn't really work as well because you'll notice at a table, we grew up in a big family, though, that uh, loud mouth. Yes, lots of jibber jabbering. Jibber jabbering. Yes. So we're all sort of used to it. And you read body cues and stuff like that. And most people are pretty good at it, unconsciously reading body cues. And know when to back down. Right. Okay, but you allow it to froth for a little while. Anyway, it's, the chaos always produces great ideas. I think so too, and that's the thing. Uh, and, and if you can actually kind of let go of that, what what someone would call a control freak, but I think it's what did I say in the in the thing? It's a resource manager. <laughs> right. Exactly. Okay. No, that's perfect. The resource manager. Now think of this too, though. Okay. So here's like uh, what we grew up with the whole, and I guess it's still out there, the railroading adventure type thing or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Control the characters. Control the plot line, control the stories. 
I don't think it's as much of a problem anymore, but I don't know. No, it's still, it, uh, there was a huge discussion on TikTok the other day. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty lively over there, yeah. the daily comment. But see, I mean, remember those times, and I know you go through them like once a week, at least, when you're running okay. <laughs> where you're not prepared for something. Yeah, okay, so good. generally, you just let go. And what you do is you let the players or the, the guys, the group point. at the table, just like start blabbering. Yep. And they will come up with hundreds of thousands yep. of ideas in moments. You're always going to have a player guy your game for Yes, you. yes. and then you right. fish one. Yep. That's, <laughs> no, that's, I should have mentioned that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. That's a brilliant comment because that's very, very true. In all of that jibber-jabber and all of that chaos, and your adventure is going to come out of it. Right, yeah, exactly. Or the yeah. conclusion of your adventure that you really didn't know how to end. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Uh, let's see, can I ask a question? Can I... Ask y'all for some advice in a game I run on Saturdays. The party finally tracked down the villain after years of hunting him down. They knew they were massively outgunned and figured they'd send the thief into the fortress with his cape of the, the Montebanc to re- I don't know if that's how you say that. Uh-huh. 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 And to do recon, the, the wizard made him invisible too, just to be safe. He was running along the wall and saw some lizard men guards and for some reason threw a bomb at the <laughs> Ending his invisibility, he misses attack, harming none. There you go. Uh, but alerting everyone. Apparently he had zoned out and thought <laughs> this was a random encounter. <laughs> Do I just kill him? There are some incredibly powerful monsters in this lair that they haven't seen yet. Uh, yeah, this, he's, yeah I, you have to play it out. I mean, that's one of those situations where it's horrible that the guy wasn't paying attention and missed, but that happens like every uh, and then they're like, wait, what's going on? I still make them roll initiative. You might soften the response a little bit. Maybe have the lizard men or whoever's in there react a little bit slower to give the party time to kind of recoup because they weren't paying attention or he wasn't paying attention. That's probably how I would, I would handle it. Just give them a little bit. <laughs> just give them a little bit of... Oh, yes, no, that's, that's what I would probably... Well, no, initially I would probably just slaughter I mean, you say, I was, <laughs> game over, you guys yeah. fell, you messed up. Davis yeah. D is a little different than I did. <laughs> you remember that, that your character attacked that bridge one time, mm-hmm. and uh, he did it. Now, I gave you warnings. Oh, yeah. And you didn't pay attention, and you got beheaded with him. Like, uh, yeah. I think so, Mac died right next to me. Yeah, Mac died right next to you. But then, uh, <laughs> so on this, but typically what I would say, because I don't predict, whatever, you don't run a game like mine. If you want the group to live and continue the thing, I would give them the warning. Right, slow the response, but let them know that there's a super powerful creature and they messed up. Yeah. And give them a chance to escape and start the whole thing rolling again. Wait a week and let everyone go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they fail, they have to chase them again and again and again until they get it right. And or, a good, yeah. you know, just well, in a good way. If you can, if yeah. you actually give them this warning and then they fall back from whatever you've got in front of them, have some of the enemy pursue them. Uh, chase them and they fight these enemy outside of the context of the dungeon or whatever it is you have and that actually helped weaken the enemy somewhat kind of balance out the screw up that they did and but they also Ooh. get punished for it they get chased you know there's a good, that's a good twist yeah they go from the predator to the, the prey. prey yeah okay so they actually have to now run they have to run for their lives that's it's one of those that's a good twist it's yeah. one of those things i do a lot if if i realize that my enemy my villain is too powerful which frequently happens I'll do spoiling attacks to weaken the villain somewhat, yeah. so, you know, and stretch it out over several several days. Uh, let's see, Owen, I use initiative a lot to determine quickness when compared to other players or enemies, even in social interactions. That's what this girl was talking about. It was kind of new to me, to be honest with you. I guess I've probably rolled initiative outside of combat, but I can't, I can't remember when. I don't, no, I don't know if I ever have or not, but what I, while that stuff is always going on at the table, everyone's... Someone will invariably say, like in one of those social situations, someone's going to invariably say something stupid. Okay? Yeah. They're going to say, even if it's like, I can't remember who said it under their breath. I think it was Chris, because you know how Chris is. They say something <laughs> under his breath, sarcastic. and just the encounter went from going north to down south. That was Chris. Like, yeah, that I was think Chris, Chris. In yeah. like a second, because he made a smart ass comment that the NPC picked up on. It was about magic. I remember that encounter. I don't yeah. Because exactly that went south fast. Yeah, it went south really fast. But I let them just do that, and uh, I would guarantee you that had I controlled like who gets to say what when, that would never have occurred. Yeah. One Mac wouldn't have let it. <laughs> <laughs> Mac would have put the kibosh on that. Yeah. Uh, box. 
Borefactor says hello. Hey. Uh, eat to surf. Uh, I have a modern. I have no idea. I have a. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a modern problem where people won't get into the chaos and they do something on their device. Well, it's not their turn. Oh. This is an online problem. So eat to surf. The way I handle that. So we're going to kind of jump around. I think in tonight's stream. Okay. Now bit. that's a new problem that we didn't have growing up. Well, it is and it isn't. Uh, so um, because we've always had people that don't pay attention or are reading we, okay, the book that's true. or oh, you know, yeah, whatever. Yes. It's it's worse now with the phones. Obviously. It's worse with the phones now because yeah. it's easier to just pick up a phone and find right. something. And it actually become you see something funny on YouTube and you want to show the person next to you and then yeah, you yeah, start yeah. losing. It's like right, you know yeah. whatever a virus. But so one of the things, and I talk about this later in the in the mess that um, that I do is I create in the, in the midst of all this chaos, all this jibber jabber and talking on it, I create some order, right? So I and this idea that I always ask people on my right, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Is I go around the table and I do that all the time. However, when I see something like what you're talking about, someone's on the phone or someone's doing something, I'll jump order if I, or if I just want to wake everyone up, I'll jump out of order. I won't start on the right. I'll start at the end of the table. And immediately everyone knows, okay, Steve's not doing what he normally does. Th something's messed up. Something's fixing to happen. We're fixing to get attacked. And they all tend to focus in pretty quickly. <clears throat> and that's, if you've kind of embraced the chaos and everybody's used to a table that's just kind of open and jibber-jabbering and whatnot, but there's some kind of structure to it. When you embrace the chaos and break that structure, it sparks, it, it, it spooks frequently. It spooks your character, your players, out of whatever they're doing. It, it's very hard to break the phone thing. It's a yes. Without um, being an ass and saying, right. put the phone down. Uh, yeah, I would never do that. I would never go so far as to say, I, don't don't, know, yeah. I know that some people have rules, like, wait, well, you know how I'm about rules, but uh, yeah. <laughs> some people have rules at the table, like, don't bring your phone, books, whatever. I, I would never do that. But like in a situation where someone's stopping, I'm trying to remember the last time that was a consistent problem. But what I would do is, just like in the random going on and stuff, say someone's, I would say, the person who's like engaged in whatever else they're doing, I would be like, roll a wisdom check. And then they would roll a wisdom check. And then I would drop them. Okay. I would just step away and go back to what I was doing. And that is a, okay. that is a really good way yeah. to do it. And then, so they're sitting there, why not roll a wisdom yeah. check? Why not roll a wisdom check? What's going on? And then they're wanting to engage me to figure out why they rolled a wisdom check. More often than not, it was for nothing. Yep. <laughs> but because all you're doing is trying to engage them to stop them from right. doing what they're doing, yeah. so they come back to the table. But and you can't do that too often because then they get used to it. No, like and that the perfect metaphor for that is when you're driving down the highway and you're driving too fast, and you see a police officer, you slow down for what is that? I think it's like eight miles. I can't remember what the average yeah. is. It's like eight or seven, ten miles, whatever. And you slow down, and that's exactly what that random. It's always out of the rearview mirror. <laughs> <laughs> There's always two. There's always <laughs> right. That's why I've got so many speeding. Oh, I did hear. There's here's a rumor that like okay, so I don't speed at all and break the law. I obey every law. <laughs> so if you put like a, a uh, what are they called? Stud finder? Not the mirror. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actual, actual stud finder on the wall. Did you use on the wall? If you put it on your dashboard, then it actually interferes. It's on the same. Oh, really? Her, that's what I heard. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> I'll go speeding through Damascus to yeah. see if it works. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we. I saw a video the other day where a guy says, "If you need to find a, a stud in the wall, it's very easy. Just take a mirror, and he holds the mirror up to the wall, and he goes, there's your stud.'" <laughs> it was, it was so funny. I feel like. Well, happy birthday, Geek Preacher. That is very cool. Oh, You're doing your first in-person game next Saturday, or that's like two days from now. Very cool. In-person game. Yeah, a lot of people are still kind of just getting back to the table. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love it. Uh, a lot of it's just, I think, honestly, so many people, and we've suffered this, we've lost half our players because they yeah. scattered so far in the pandemic that getting them back to the table, they just, they physically can't. Yeah. I mean, Mac would do it in a heartbeat, but he's two hours away. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. It's not so easy. Uh, oh, look, it's, it's Dr. Jibber and Mr. Jabber. <laughs> <laughs> we need some t-shirts with that on there is what we need. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. The cast at the table gives the GM ideas to work on between sessions. Yes, to bring some reason and plot twists from all over the future. See, that's a great point. If you let it go and you let the players kind of do their thing, let them own the table like I talk about, uh, then you can take a breather. Oh, yeah. Take, no, a, step take back, a step back. Make some notes. Yep. Figure out what you're doing. Uh, say hi, Trevor. I mean, so here's the best one, though, is when... <laughs> 
when the characters or the players take over the game, like they're just sitting there talking amongst themselves, making plans, trying to figure out what's going on, and they're just blah, 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 blah. You can just sit there back behind. I've seen you do oh, it. Yeah, do Read it. a book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to keep You'll comics. You'll pull out your Geromino book or your comics. I used your... to keep comics behind the screens <laughs> <laughs> while they were arguing about what to do. I'd sit there and read a comic book. No one needs to know, man. Yeah, it's, yeah that's right. Just get big screens. You can even put your phone back there, a little computer panel whatever. There you go. In answer to King Cothar's problems, you could have them react a bit slower, have them beastly stacks rather than standard. <laughs> man, I watched the uh, promo to that, the intro to that the other day. That was a cool show, man. Yeah, that, was little, that was cool. cool. Yeah. And I never knew that they're still on Earth. For some reason, I yeah, always thought they were in a, But they just go down a waterfall. Yeah. Right? Down through the center. Of the, I think they're in like the center. See, I thought the they were in the center, but on the... Promo, it seems like they're not. They they're just like go down a waterfall and down a river. They're like somewhere in the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Ozarks. They're somewhere somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they're the Ozarks. They're the Rockies. Uh, hi, Trolls. Don't forget to correct the page numbers in the 8th printing page. Oh, yeah. That's not been done. The index still needs to be done. That needs to be done. And i got a, a bit of work to do on the headers. The headers are kind of messed up uh, with some artifacts from the first printing that I'm determined to fix this time. Don't forget that it's a group hallucination. <laughs> there you go. In my thief player's defense, he's Skyping into the game from Japan while oh. the rest of us are still sitting on the table. I asked him like four or five times, Are you sure? <laughs> he kept saying, Yeah, I'm sure. That's Man, like a you definite warning <laughs> signal. Uh, yeah, really. Right. <laughs> the person running the game is, Are you sure? And you're like, No, I don't. I back off. It says he was alone, nobody could whisper. Y'all need to set up like your Skype and then have another way to talk to him so someone can whisper to him. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. All the way from Japan, that must be a timing problem. Oh, it's going to be tough. It's like nine hours? It's 12 hours of time. Yeah. Yeah, that's no problem. Wait, there's no river. <laughs> there you go. I always miss out. Uh, let's see. Instead of rolling for the chance of random encounter, I check to see if anyone is on the phone. If they are random encounter, just happens. <laughs> That'll wake them up. Yeah. Uh, that'll, that'll bring them to the table. We used to call it, and back in the day, we used to call it bringing them to their senses. I'm going to bring them to their senses and bring them back to the table. And it is gets, it gets tough with phones and whatnot. Oh, and yeah. people are always texting and calling. Oh, them. yeah, no. And it's so easy. The phone is so convenient. And to be honest, there's a lot of entertaining stuff on, like, well, TikTok. That would be funny. Well, it, <laughs> the thing is, but, and, I, I'm, and I don't mean this as a negative comment to anyone, anywhere, anytime, but... With the access that texting gives us all, you used to could go back in the eighties. You would go play a game, and no one could call you. So if, oh, yeah. if they needed you, they had to wait five hours you know, right, yeah, <laughs> until yeah. you came home or whatever, or whoever, whatever it is you do. Your boss couldn't get a hold of you. Yeah, whoever. But now with proximity, anybody can get a hold of you. They just, I think they most stay. people, even our age, have forgotten how. Oh yeah. Disconnected. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you we just were. couldn't. When you left, you left. Yeah, and that's it. And, I mean, I don't know who it was. I wouldn't see Russell for like six days. We just met every six days. So now here's day. a funny one. So my, once a week. my son's in college and during his semester, my oldest son, and he moved. He moved from one dorm or apartment to another dorm or apartment. He didn't tell anybody. We didn't know. And uh, well, I didn't care, whatever. But my wife was a little irritated, and she asked me, she said, because I moved a lot in college. I moved about every six months. She said, well, didn't you keep your parents abreast of when you moved? I got to think, I don't think I ever told them. No. They never certainly came to visit. And <laughs> I just moved when I moved. And whatever. <laughs> yeah, no. Remember that time I disappeared and y'all had to track me down through credit card numbers? Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. And, yeah, so Davis disappeared. And he was in the Four Corners? The Four Corners. He was hiking in the Four Corners once years and years and years ago. And a blizzard hit and just obliterated the whole oh, area. Yeah, no, no, that was a big green river. Yeah. And mom called and mom said, Your brother's out in the four corners and there's a blizzard. You need to go find him. And I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I worked in the four corners. <laughs> I was hiking in Montana. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I told mom. Yeah. It's huge. Yeah. I can't go to, yeah, what is it, four states? Colorado, yeah. Wyoming? I don't know. You got a thousand miles between where I was working and where I was hiking. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was just funny to crap. I don't own a mobile phone, and, and from my friend's experience, they don't seem to get reception here. 
And so luckily that problem doesn't happen when we do in-person games. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm still out of touch a lot. I don't answer texts when I get them. I answer things when I decide I'm available. That's kind of how I do it. Yeah, that's, yeah. And I flip my phone over all the time. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, that's how I've started. I mean, there was... It's exhausting. Because I didn't have a cell phone until I was actually forced to get one. And How's it going, John Z. Jack? For the first few years, I answered every text and every email and everything yeah. for a while. And then in the past four years, I've reached the point where... I literally don't answer it's, the phone. I awesome. send texts when yeah, I Yeah, I know you don't answer the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I got troll biz, so, there, so it's New Mexico, Colorado, Arizona, and Utah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you weren't even close. No, 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 no. I was actually, where was I? North of Dinosaur National Park on the Green River in a valley. I had gone somewhere I wasn't allowed to go, so no one would found me. You just would have died. <laughs> <laughs> Thus passed Davidson <laughs> on a grand adventure. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. Anyways, he was partying in Moab while you were driving in a blizzard. Yeah, yeah. yeah I didn't leave the house. I was like, nah, he's on his own. <laughs> I'm crossing the country. I miss Moab. That is a nice one. Quick, I'm finally writing my last spell. Give me a material component for a regeneration spell. I don't know. What do you need Wait. to regenerate? Frog. Something of a frog. Don't frogs regenerate legs? So a, a frog's leg. A sea cucumber. A sea cucumber. Do they regenerate? I don't know if they're regenerant, but they're badass. <laughs> <laughs> they're badass. I would go with a frog because they can get a frog. No, a no, there no you go. salamanders. No, which is the one with the tail that grows back? Yeah, who does the tail? The gecko? No. No, I don't. I have no um, idea. Just Google it. The sal- there's a salamander tail. tail. There you go. Okay, get yeah, yeah, yeah. lizard tail, but a specific lizard. It's rare, 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 and you have to travel to either some jungle or some mountain or some freaking bizarre place. Hey, lizard and, tail. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to fight to get it, and then you have to. Oh no, 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 no! It even gets better. Then you got Druid who has to identify the correct lizard so that you can get all of it. <laughs> you have to get or you know some. 40, no, 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 you turn the whole thing into a seventeen game. games later. Yeah, no, <laughs> and the player sitting there. Well, you just plays resurrect. <laughs> <laughs> I had a super weird dream the other day. Someone wanted me to run a spell spell jammer campaign, a setting I never once played in. CNC is so weird. Why would I be thinking about spell jammer? I was not talking about it. Someone was talking about spell jammer. Was it Thomas? Someone was talking about spell jammer. No, it's Satine Fanning was talking about that just the other day. I think it was her. I can't remember. I don't know. Maybe he's been making the rounds or something. Wait, what? Spell jammer? Yeah, that was, in the, that was a game that came yeah. out in the World Be Gone day. Yeah, no, I, I remember. I don't think I ever played it. Maybe once or twice. I can't. I don't think I ever played. It. I never really cared for sci-fi stuff. Probably too. the Gamma World. What is it popular again? Gamma World was cool. Yeah, Gamma World was awesome. Oh, uh, I don't pay attention to who Gamma World is. A little bit of amazing adventures. One of my players has a tale of how he went to a gaming con one weekend, and by the time he got home, his parents had moved. And never. <laughs> Beautiful. That's just beautiful. That's just beautiful. Oh, man. That's just the way to do it. If you're going to do it, do it. I had a lizard as a pet once. I call it Tiny because it was my new t- <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I've been talking about spell jammer as well, but not on the Tiki Talks. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just in the it's in the air or something. I just remembered how is the adventure spell book looking. I'm still keen to see all those runes. It's all laid out except those runes. i got to get those in. The player's handbook is, as of course everything around here does, taking longer than I wanted it to. I expect it to be done last week. Uh, I think I got about two more passes. Uh, I got to do the index. That's going to be hard. Uh, and then uh, fix the page numbers for the thing. And, and I've taken all of this off of Peter's desk because Peter's drawing pictures. And he's got some new, beautiful art in there. The knight, the fighter, the, oh, yeah, the yeah. turning pictures. For those of you who've gotten the book already, uh, just you know, some amazing stuff, Peter. So I'm, I'm actually, I've taken this off Peter's desk because I want him to focus on some of these art pieces. And I'm super jazzed about this Player's Handbook. I think it's the best we've ever put out. Uh, the what? The Player's Handbook. Oh, yeah, no, with it the new layout and everything. So one of the thing, one of the layout things that, like, uh, I have a hang-up about is, okay, Steve and I have different, no, you like you don't like blank spaces. I don't generally like blank spaces. Right, I don't want to and it's because he reads so much textbooks right and there's like history books yeah. history books there's maybe a little bit of blank space in there but not much so he hates blank space whereas in, I do I like that blank space yeah. I like a whole lot of blank space in fact if a book were just blank pages <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be happy with that oh yeah be a little easy to read yeah, yeah. <laughs> be easy to read. Read. I wouldn't need my glasses I can make up rules as I go anyway hey, yeah, you'll, so. you'll appreciate this comment King Cuthor says modern 5e gamers desperately want to a port a port of spell jammer 
And for some reason, a part of spell jammer for some reason, I suspect this is because none of them had had to endure playing spell jammer. <laughs> <laughs> I never played it, so I can't say one way or the other. One word per page, 12 font. There you go. Yeah. yeah That's Dave, how I want it, yes. Yeah, Davis is pushing for 15 or 16 font in the books. 24. Which isn't going to happen, but 12,000 pages later. <laughs> <laughs> but We just need to reduce the word count. So we're kind of actually hitting a lot of what we what I sent out in the newsletter, uh, imparting ownership to the chaos. Oh, that was something, just kind of a thing to, so as a thought about allowing chaos at your table. Some people don't, some people do. But one of the reasons that I do allow chaos at the table is that it actually gives ownership to the players. <laughs> it gives ownership to the players because they're actually doing something apart from what you are doing as a GM. And that's actually a cool thing. You know, I've talked before about GMs tend to dominate the, the airwaves. They talk too much. They spend 45 minutes describing their setting, and nobody's listening at that point. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No one gives a crap. Yeah, yeah no. And, and it's so easy for GMs to forget that players are actually there for not necessarily for your setting and your campaign, but for their player character to survive. Uh, so if you actually allow them to role play and all that stuff kind of out of turn, it's, and though it's chaotic, it gives them some ownership of the table, which is just a really good idea. Yeah, that's fine. So, how many pages, how many notes? Do so, I, I do five right. tricks of the trade on each Thursday. So, we did this one, we, we just did this one, we sort of kind of covered these. Okay, three. so Kent made five of these, and see, I imagine if I weren't here, you'd be actually probably towards... Oh, the, no, okay. you can ask these guys, I'm always, I'm usually okay, talking about, yeah, yeah, about the walk of dead. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> just wander off into... Yes. I didn't. I haven't watched the latest. Uh, fear. I'm in halfway through the final part of season fear five. Oh, uh, fear. Whatever. They expand. They expand. That's called a notebook. They already have blank page books. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah. We and discovered a monster talk. Uh, I love the growl. Uh, let's see where is this. We discovered on monster talk that the growl is key to spell gemmer ships. Oh, that's interesting. So Eat to Surf runs a show right after this one called. Or is it only on Tuesdays? Are called Monster Talk. Uh. uh I love the grill. I don't know why. It's in the it was it was in the theme folio kind of floating beach. Yeah, 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 I remember. I love that much. Yeah. This page intentionally left blank. See in my every army FM ever published. <laughs> it's speaking as a lord. Wait, wait, wait. I nah, I just goofed everything up. Speaking no, there was someone speaking as a lawyer. Speaking as a lawyer. Double space yeah, lawyer. double space fourteen point text with one inch margins is ideal. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Double space would look weird. Now. Yes, it would. <laughs> Davis would love it, though. So when we first went from 9 font to 10 font, I remember Davis sitting and we were gaming when that, I don't know what font, his fifth printing or whatever. And Davis, <laughs> Davis opened up, he almost started to cry because he could read the book. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, let's see. Speaking of players not listening to the backstory, have you read DM of the Rings yet? I have not, but I need to. We were talking about that Tuesday. Uh, speaking of things that I've been meaning to do, wait, I'm, I'm bad at it. I want each campaign to feel different, unique, so I tend to get involved in the setting details too much. I do too, but I try to break it apart. I'm mean, to do like two or three minutes and then let them do shit and then do two or three minutes. But I, mean, I watched uh, Prince of Darkness Tuesday night. Uh, fantastic movie. A little dated. Obviously, it's an 87 film. Who is it? Carpenter? John Carpenter? Is that his name? John Carpenter? Yeah. Yeah. Um, about it's really cool it's very different because it's these uh, this priest is guarding this idol uh -huh. been, they've been guarding for 2,000 years priest dies uh, and this new priest isn't really sure of everything so he brings in all these physicists and uh, linguists and an anthropologist I don't know whatever a whole bunch of scientists to come in um, yeah John Carpenter to come in and study it and of course this thing is a conduit to some other dimension they don't really say hell or anything like that but and the special effects are what they are in 1987, but it was really, really cool. I really enjoyed it. Uh, you should check it out. Um, yeah, I, okay, yeah, I'll check it out. But uh, I was telling, I was telling Kent the other day, or when I came here, yesterday, I guess, when I came down here. So Eon Flux, the it was a comic book. Was it manga though? First, it, it, was, it, it was on MTV where I first ran into it as yeah. a cartoon. Okay, so it might be anime. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, Eon Flux was one of my favorite cartoons. Well, cool whatever thing. stories, but then they made it into a movie, and so, at some point, yeah, with Shirley's there. Yeah, Shirley's. Yeah, and uh, just to, I, just to interrupt real quick and let everyone know, it's part of the TLG operating agreement with all of our contract laborers and employees that we have to watch every movie that Shirley's there on makes. 
<laughs> but anyway, I watched it years and years ago, and uh, I haven't watched it since, but I was on Prime the other night looking for anything to entertain me for an hour, and I came across the Young Flux, and I decided... The movie. The movie. Yeah. And I decided to watch it, and I think I made it like eight minutes in, and I was like, no way. <laughs> Yeah, I can watch almost anything. <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah, that's right. But it, it, it was a good movie. I really yeah, enjoyed no, it. Yeah, was, overall it was a good movie. Yeah. I still have positive. But I was like, okay, so there's a scene where she gets into this. It would be like getting into Fort Knox. Like, So the security apparatus for this entire surviving 5 million people, and it's like in the year 20 billion or something like that. Oh, that's the one. And it's just, you know how you get into it? You go down the hole in the top. Uh, and then you can control it all by Isn't that how the whole Death Star thing, they forgot to put yeah, a yeah. mirror up or something? Yeah, there's, a, there's an engineer down there who's like, ah, no, nah, just forget that part. They actually, they actually did a really good job in Rogue One, I think, of explaining that. That that was intentionally designed that way by a rebel. Oh, okay, yeah, no, I do was, remember. Yeah, that was no, because, really well done. Because there's not a thing, I mean, yeah. even I could design something better than that. No, no it's crazy. Actually, I couldn't. But, yeah. <laughs> if you had your notebook, you could. Yeah. <laughs> is there a source book out there that goes over costs for hirelings or consulting buildings and such I want to run a campaign but I want the players to have the ability to get a stronghold or something to get hirelings to help them that's the castle keeper's guide to help them uh, defend it I think it would be interesting to see where they would build or what sort of NPCs they have hired yes so the castle keeper's guide has all of that uh, Mark uh, Mold car uh, we only got one left here well there's the the uh don't we have the, oh no, that's engineering dungeons. Yeah, engineering dungeons. Dungeons. yeah, so the Castle Keeper Guide has all of that in there and it's rolling. It's we just got and it's not going to be this week, but it's going to ship to us late next week. It has all of that stuff in there, so definitely uh, check that out when it comes what rolling it your way. Coming? It's supposed to be here today, but clearly it didn't happen. And I talked to her, Dory, earlier and it's going to ship next week. They're short handed because of COVID, oh, they yeah, can't yeah. keep people in the same thing that every part of the country suffering from. Donald Pleasance was a classic. I love Donald Pleasance. That dude can do. He is in a movie, one of my favorite movies, with uh, Charlton Heston called Will Penny that you would love. Uh, cow, old dying cowboy just starts. He rides a fence with his ranch. Will Penny. Why does that name strike you? You've it? seen it. Uh, and Donald Pleasance is the bad guy. In it. Wait, who's the main actors? In Will Penny? Yeah. Charlton Heston. He's the cowboy. Is the name of the movie Will Penny? Will Penny is the name of the movie, and he he does this. Um, like I said, he's an old cowboy who gets a winter job riding fish. Okay, okay, I'll watch it. Really good. But well, you know what movie did hold up well though? Uh, Outlaw Jesse Wells. That's and, a fantastic. Movie. Yeah, this is still a fantastic movie, and so is uh, what's the other? What's his name? Clint Eastwood. Yeah, Clint Eastwood plays in the other cowboy movie. Has that famous? Uh, he's in Unforgiven. Movie. No, not the Unforgiven. It's one of the oldest spaghetti westerns. It's the long one. The good, the, good the, the good and bad. Yeah, yeah, it still holds up perfectly over time. Very Speaking good. of which, I meant to ask you because I've forgotten the name of this movie. Uh, it's the German World War Two movie on the Eastern Front. Iron Iron Cross. Iron Cross. Iron Cross. Iron Cross. Great. Movie. I was wanting to look at that. That's uh, got uh, Lee Marvin. I think is the guy. Yeah, yeah. It has Lee Marvin. I think. I think yeah, it's yeah, Lee Marvin. Anyway. That's a good movie. That's an excellent movie. Yeah. Very seventies, much like Prince of Darkness. What about the Engineering Castles book? I haven't seen it myself. Just thought it was on story. I would wait for the Castle Keeper's Guide. The Engineering Castles is going to help, but it's not going to help with the NPCs and all that. I would definitely wait for the CKG. Uh, it will be rolling out soon. And Liquid Television TV. I yeah. watched. Uh, no, 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 no. I watched Dark Star. Also, John Carpenter as prestige recommendation. Low budget college film, but really well done. It's on the YouTube. Wow. I love Dark Star. I love Dark Star. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. And it still holds up for me. Yeah, it's just because uh, yeah. it's not about the special effects. It's really. About no, living in space. Yeah, it's living the toilet paper. The toilet paper. We're out of toilet paper. And, and, I love, and the conversation with the bomb is just too much. That's hilarious. And I love the, the janitor. He, <coughs> I'm not supposed to be here. I was sleeping at night. After that. It's so funny. <laughs> it's just great. Yeah, definitely watch Dark Star if you have not. Hardware Wars. There you go. Oh, TX 1138. I haven't seen that in ages. Oh. <laughs> Dorman's Games. Rogue One, that was the movie with the planetary shield that had an opening like Druidia yes. in Space Walls, <laughs> right? Yeah. I don't know about all that, but it did. they gave a good reason why the Death Star had such a weakness. Look, <laughs> look, at the end of the day, yeah. I'm not going to comment about the Star Wars. I mean, you got to back up, because it's... Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, no, it's just a story. It's just, yeah. yeah. None of it really, none of the movies ever make any sense when you start breaking them down. Nothing does. No, it's and very I, You know, even I was watching Godzilla the other day, and uh, with... Yeah. I mean, he was really excited about you know Godzilla knocking all the jets down, 
And I just, I remember edging over to him and says, you know they can fire those missiles from like 20 miles away. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> they do that all the time. I know, it's like Godzilla and King Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? You guys are close. Yes, I guys are close. You freaking noodle, boy. <laughs> it's 20 and miles And believe me, King Kong can't take a nuke. <laughs> it was, yeah, really, it was just funny. It's a good movie, though. I enjoyed King Kong. I I've got a pretty good suspension of this movie. Yeah, I, no, I really enjoy it. I, I can back off of yeah. most of this, most of it. I don't like the fact that Godzilla beat King Kong two times. I had a barbarian that flew pretty well along the bank bankers. They kept trying to jump on the back of a wyvern, was it? In a chasm in one of my online games. They, oh. they just all plummeting to death. Best movie quotes, Outlaw Josie Wells. That movie is, is. beautiful, and his quote where he, when they, shouldn't we bury him? Yes. Buzzer's got to eat same as worms. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love James Coburn, yeah. Well, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, James, James Coburn. James Coburn. Yeah, that's yes, what it was. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Crossfire, good movie. Lord of Illusion, Scott Bakula. Erase your head. Now, see, this is where. Erase your head. Oh my God. This is how most streams yeah. end up. Just on yeah, no, Erase your head. <laughs> wow, that's a weird it's movie. A long time. Yeah. Yeah, Omoot. Omoot, yes, he knows. Uh, uh, Josie Wells is probably. He's in my top three because I'm my favorite Western of all time. Unforgiven and Open Range are right up there. I love those. Will Penny's a great Western. Uh, they're actually John Wayne's True Grit is a fantastic True Western. Grit's a really good Western. If you watch... There are actually a lot of good Westerns out there. Uh, yes. How's it on stage? <laughs> Josie Wells is a classic one here. Don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining. Yep. <laughs> Just the whole, the whole movie. There's this scene. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up. Uh, talking about organized chaos. Let's see. This is my favorite scene in cinema, and it's from... John Wayne's True Grit. And I want to point out, if you've never read the book True Grit, uh, read the book. Um, it is fantastic. If, if I was given one book to read before my death, it would be True Grit. Uh, it's just fantastic. What is that True Grit? I would read Notes from Underground. What is Notes from Underground? Well, I heard <laughs> See if I can find it. Just so I can be depressed before I die. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This one. Uh, there's a scene where he's talking to Maddie. Mm, and this scene. So I'm going to post this. I've posted this before. And so some of you have been around for a while seeing it. This is the greatest scene in cinema for me. I've ever oh, seen. You know, speaking of which. Uh, these, Fantastic. For those of you out there who have never read, like, uh, who are the West mm. Lewis mm. Moore. What? King Kozar, the Valley of Guangdi is the greatest West of You remember that one? It's the dinosaurs fighting cowboys. And they're, roping, <laughs> they're roping the Allosaurus. You remember? <laughs> That's a, who is the Harry, Harry, Harry Hannahausen? I don't know. Whatever it is. <laughs> it's this hilarious. Is Cat Baloo. Anyways, I interrupted. Cat Baloo's good. Cat oh, Cat Baloo's actually really, really good. Two Mules and Sister Sarah. That's a yes, good that's one. Yes, that's another good one. one. Okay, so for those of you who, out there who, who haven't watched Resident who are Louis Lamour, Zane Grey, uh, well, even Robert E. Howard's Westerns. Yeah. Okay? And then watch the movies. And this, uh, this is really an earnest piece of advice. It is so rife with adventure ideas. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. it is really, really, really just rife with adventure ideas. Mm -hmm. you more Scott. Yeah, no, you just like pull through, read a book, and you pull out four or five characters, the settings, the conflicts, and stuff like that, and you throw your characters in the middle of it. You've basically created a Western in your fantasy setting. But, I mean, it's, it's just brilliant, it's brilliant, brilliant conflicts yeah. that are created in some of these Westerns. Yeah, Big Danger, I gotta agree. Open Range has a fantastic gunfight at the end. Yeah. El Dorado, Real Bravo, great movies. Uh, yes, possibly one of my top five all time favorites. There's a good list of recommendations for Westerns on the great Western movies by Nicholas Chennault. He spells it with two N's, and there you go. Um, <laughs> wait, a <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute, Borfaxer. Why, why is this all ringing some kind of ancient bell? No dialogue can ever beat uh, translated and dubbed martial arts movies. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I do love that stuff. A big hand for the ladies. Terrific fun. Read Don Quixote, and you'll never die because oh, okay. the book's so damn long. <laughs> <laughs> you have to finish. Just That's your thing. Watch. Immortality. That's is right. Like, I made it. That and what's the Russian novel? War. War and Peace. War yeah. and Peace. Yeah, yeah. I'm still working my way through that. I, I'll try. Forty years later. What's the? I'll try. What's the Odyssey and the other one? I've read the Odyssey. Right. 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 Good Lord. I'll try that someday. Hondo is a great right. book. That's my favorite. Yeah. Ray Harryhausen. That's what I was thinking of. 
Hondo's my, my favorite Louis L'Amour book and one of my favorite John Hondo's Hondo's really, really good. Um, I'm telling you, CJ in the Old West, Old West and Night Fantasy. There you go. Yeah, hey. no, it's, it's true, though, because, okay, you, you've got... Cowboys and Aliens. Did you ever see that movie? No. Oh, it's awesome! <laughs> so, so, like, role-playing games as a, as a game, as a genre, and the way it's been developed, it, and I know that in Asia it's different. It's rooted out of the West, and then it's redeveloped through its main, like, tree or whatever. But it's still a Western game, okay? It was developed in the West. It comes from a Western idea of, of gaming, like, from tactical games to this. So it all has Western roots, American Western roots. American mythology is Cowboys and Indians. That's our mythology. And it plays so perfectly with role-playing games. It does. And all you just have to do is change the setting. All you're doing is changing the dressing. But Cowboys it just works. Really no, you're good. right. That is what it's doing. Yeah, and Peter Bradley has that game he wants me to read from Japan, and I cannot remember the name of it. Is, he, is Peter ever on here? Uh, what's in Blue Moon? He's probably... I'll ask him again, but I need to get that game from Japan because he says it's like a 10 star game just a really really he perfect game he loves that stuff but it's but it's a, it's absolutely rooted in eastern like Japanese culture and stuff like that so yeah, it plays he, different he pushes yeah. that stuff to me about once a day <laughs> <laughs> he's like no, I want to read it because it would be fascinating to read and I'm like we gotta finish the yeah. <laughs> uh, Cowboys and Crusades Cowboys and Coal Mine there you go the Iliad and the Aeneid uh, the Odyssey the Aeneid is the Roman one right yeah, yes. I, I, yes. I never read either of those two. I did read the That's Odyssey. Where, what's his name? Just made up a history to drag. Dick. Yeah. yeah. Bring the Romans up to speed. Yeah. Silly Romans. Kind of like how the Magnificent Seven is a Western version of the Seven Samurai. Yep. Yeah. Seven Samurai is a good movie. Seven Samurai is a good movie. Magnificent Seven is a good movie, but Seven Samurai is a very good movie. And, you, uh, and it flip flops through. It all flip flops through well. Because if you ever watched Ron, R A N, by Kira Kurosawa. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and all it is is King Lear set in Japan. Um, and it's a brilliant movie. It's a I, whole brilliant movie. I love that type of stuff. Yeah. Because I'm the type of guy, I don't... I don't care. I don't care. I just want the, to the original's good? Right. Yeah. The remake's good? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I actually really enjoyed the remake of True Grit. It was mm-hmm. a really good movie. Oh, well, I thought it was really good. Yeah, they did a great job with it. Um, that's the one I took Pete to, and he watched like 10 minutes of it, and Pete was younger, and he goes, wait, is this one of those movies where they're riding horses? <laughs> Oh, wait, 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 don't they have GTA 5 where you ride horses? You're telling me about uh, that. Right? Red Dead Redemption is GTA yeah, 5 on horses. <laughs> <laughs> You'd actually like Red Dead Redemption. It's, it's slower. It's not right, right. right. <laughs> Role-playing games are mostly closely aligned with the Western uh, genre. Intrepid adventurers facing the vast wilderness of the frontiers, taming the wilderness, and yeah. terror carving out of chaos. Carving order out of chaos. What is a dragon to a knight, but a grizzly bear to a frontiersman? Just file the serial numbers off, and you're golden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's true. It. That's perfect that's right it. there. Yeah. You can't go wrong with Kurosawa. You guys are starting to sound like Steve Snell and uh, clones now. <laughs> Don't forget the great old TV westerns. Riflemen have gun, will travel. That's the oh one. yeah, That's a great show. Yeah. I forgot about that. Want it better a lot? Yeah, but Hamlet too, because why not? <laughs> Brand, there you go. I would rather run into a grizzly. Yeah, probably than a dragon. This was a tiny dragon. Maybe those little fairy dragons. Keeping the Borderlands is just a western fort. Okay, I have to go. Talk to monsters. Oh yeah, we're this this uh, and raw. Yeah, the stream's over. Good Lord of mercy. Oh. Oh, we see, and this is why I wanted Davis in on this stream because it's just chaos. It's good. That's what we were talking about. Seeing it all worked out fine. So. <laughs> there you go. You learned to go watch a western. Yeah. That's what you could have done that on your own. <laughs> Anyways, but I, I do want to second Omoot's recommendation of Prince of Darkness. Watch it. Good movie. A lot of fun. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go, then what's the movie about? That's Rector Howard in the Middle Ages where there's like torture. Oh something. yeah. Uh, Name of the Rose. They. It's got two titles. No, it's not Name of the Rose. They got two titles oh. too. Oh, Name of the Rose has got Sean book. Connery. Yeah. Uh, but you're right, it has Rose in it. Come on, guys, you know what it is. Um, blood and... Yeah, yeah, Blood and something. Blood and Torture. Blood and Gore. It's not Torture. <laughs> blood. No, not Lady Hawk. It's got uh, Rutger Howard. It's Middle Ages. Uh, it's Renaissance, really. It's really violent. It's very violent. It's actually got a rape scene in it. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And these mercenaries get it holed up. And Flesh and Blood. There flesh we go. Flesh and Blood. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Yes, Flesh and Blood. And they renamed it. They sanitized it a little bit and renamed yeah. it later. But Flesh and Blood. Uh, blood and Iron was the renamed version of it. Yeah, so, uh, great movie. But, I want to watch that. Yeah, it's a... Uh, but, yeah, caution. It's yeah, got... It's, testy parts. Yeah. <laughs> it's got some violence in it, not just hack the head off violence. So go in it with just that, that warning. Beware of the well. Yeah, it's just going with the warning. 
<laughs> it's a good movie. It's one of my favorite medieval movies. That in the Moss Valley. You know, it's funny because I didn't remember that scene because I, I don't think that scene was throw in throw was a throw in scene. It made no, me, it's, it's, a, it. it's a huge. That's the scene she dominates Rutger Hauer's character. Yeah. Uh, because she to avoid the rape she gets into it so that he the others won't do it. Yeah, it's not a throwaway scene. Yes, okay? no, Which it's it, a huge And that's where that's movie. where it, you know anyway. That gets into whole movie critiques. Why the uh, throwaway crap. Anyway. The coupon has been removed from your cart. The entered coupon code has been already applied. Okay, that was fixed. All right, good deal. Anyways, also last movie recommendation unless you've got one is The Lost Valley with Omar Sharif. Very hard to find. Fantastic movie. Thirty Years War. He goes to a valley that's peaceful. He's a, yeah, a soldier. Right, right. And then others find it, and it's just... Oh, it's there a, is another movie. I don't know what it's called. Uh, so it takes place in the Middle Ages, and a priest is sent out to... No, 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 no. Uh, they're going out to the, to figure out why this village doesn't have the plague. Oh, I don't know. Okay, and it's like four or five soldiers go out to this village. I'm not sure which one that is. Yeah, I can't remember the name. And they're trying to figure out why... It's in England. Why this village doesn't have the plague and the village doesn't have the plague because they're in a swamp and no one goes to the village so they don't have much interaction with the outside world until the priests show up yeah, and one of them had the plague um you can't I think that was a anyway I can't remember see Willie knows Lost Valley is a classic oh that's a horrible movie. movie at the end of it it's absolutely horrible yeah well he's going to okay. give spoilers away <laughs> <laughs> all right well that's it for us uh, this is a this is a good great session we're going to have try to get Davis on more often wait Okay, everyone, we are going to raid Eat to Surf for more Monster Fun. All right, so we're doing a raid here in a second. Uh, Chuck's been giving me... Blah, 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 blah. He's <laughs> the Vikings, yeah, the Vikings is good. The Vikings is very good. <laughs> 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 There's also a movie with... Uh, uh, who's the man who played Planet of the Apes? Um, Sean Connery? No, no, no. Uh, Charlton Heston? Charlton Heston's in it. Oh, we got a raid. Charlton Heston movie, medieval movie, don't know what it's called. All right, thanks everybody for showing up. We'll see you next week. We're rating now. Boom!